Ghost Runner feels like. Oh, you're right, come here, come. Yeah. Ah. Oh, 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 you thought you could get me with that. Ah. Ah. I missed. I didn't miss that time. Oh, shut up. Where are you at? I got a source. Oh, you thought you'd give me with that. Oh, 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 didn't stand a chance. The game has a good thing and a lot of not good things. Sadly, these bad things do get in the way of the combat, the good thing, quite often. First, the biggest problem. Well, the second biggest problem. The game's a measly six hours long. IGN once said, You'll be hooked the entire five to six hours it takes to reach the end. While this may sound short, I'd say a short game that is amazing from start to finish is better than a longer one that overstays its welcome. And I couldn't agree more. But despite the six hours, I would say it overstays its welcome. An hour or two of the game is puzzles or parkour. Both of these break up the pacing, and I wish the devs put more time into combat encounters, rather than this stupid puzzle. I, as well as everyone else, bought this game for the combat, not puzzles. Luckily, there are only 15 or 30 minutes of puzzles but that's a lot for a six hour game. The parkour definitely fits what the game is like, and for the most part, I was fine with it. It's just got two problems. The wall running is not good for precise jumps. Luckily, it doesn't make you do many, but in the ending sequence, which I cannot show, it has the second crappiest parkour section of any video game I've played. You gotta run from a small wall, jump to another small wall, Wow, they're moving backwards, and it's so annoying. The other problem is the midair dash, which in every other situation is great, but it does not give you enough of a boost. It gets you hardly anywhere, but the platforming sometimes makes you do it. A good alternative that I wish they added was a double jump. This would remove the need for a dash in parkour, and combat would be even more fun. Being able to have more aerial movement and more mobility in general would make any movement in any situation far more fun. The combat, as said before, is like, all right, the trick with these enemies is to lure them over, and then you just jump and go take care of the more important one. Ah! Didn't stand a chance. Watch this. This is how you do this part. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, now we get the ninja star. See, the trick with these is you gotta aim in the general direction of the enemy. Wherever they are. Where are they? Oh, right there. Okay. So, you see, you just gotta... Use your... Where is everybody? Oh, oh. Uh, ooh. Watch this. Oh. 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 Idiot. Oh, oh. Idiot. Bam. Didn't stand a chance. Ah. I can't act like this anymore. This isn't, this isn't fun. This is just done it before. Boring. This is what it feels like for the first hour. Afterwards, it gets a bit boring. The coolness of it all wears off and it becomes a 3D Katana Zero. It's fair, most of the time. There is enemy variety, and I love how everything dies in one hit, both you and the enemies. Although the shield guys slow down the combat a bit, and the enemies introduced in the final area are so annoying, I swear. The upgrade system is more annoying than anything. You gotta fit this crap into this crappy box, and not all upgrades are even. For instance, this one is OP as hell, especially combined with this. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, that upgrade system seems pretty cool and interesting. Well, it is for the first 30 minutes. After that, it's just annoying, trust me. The abilities are cool. Too bad they have super long cooldowns, haha, <laughs> right? The only useful one is this AoE that kills everything that lives. It's only useful because of its perk. It makes it so if you kill two enemies with it, it instantly recharges. This is extremely useful with the other perk, increasing its AoE. This is a low risk, high reward, and it's only ever useful because it takes forever to get any ability charged. I find that many games have great abilities, like Harden and Mortal Shell, but their long cooldowns mean... Uh, I can't think of what to say, but you know what I mean. I would like to say, the bosses suck. There are three. The first one is, well, we'll talk about that later. The second one is a Sekiro boss in first person and also bad. And the third is just memorizing what they're gonna do. For whatever reason, they made the ending sequence not only a pissy platforming challenge, but it's also the most anticlimactic thing ever. It was so lame. At the end, all I felt was relief. 
Not unlike finishing a test after working three hours on it. You're never happy, you're just relieved that the torture is over. Now as for my single biggest problem with the game. And Tom here is it. It's not fun, it's really not. This is the closest I have been to breaking something from a video game. And I beat the bed of chaos. Tom is worse than this. My deaths to Tom were about a quarter of my total deaths. It's so dumb. And yes, I'm mad because I'm bad. What of it? 30 minutes of my 6 hour game were spent on this dumb oversized sex toy. Whoever designed this is a sadist, I swear. Who designed this? This is like the first person who ever tried cow's milk. I cannot imagine what was going through their head. I can only wonder, who thought this would be fun? Seriously. I really want to curse at this piece of poopy poo poo, but I'm worried my parents will get angry. But if I did, they wouldn't understand my pain. I legitimately think that this is a reason not to buy the game. It gets worse. Watch this. Now oh my god. Finally. Jeez, that was terrible. I hated that so much. Oh my god. Are you okay? I'm fine. Climb back up. No. No. No, 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 no. I need a break. The second phase is even worse. You gotta use that midair dodge thing I complained about to do this shockwave crap, along with flying lasers everywhere. And then the third phase, oh my god, the third phase. The third phase was tolerable, at least compared to the others. The story kinda sucks. It's very predictable. The only interesting thing is hearing the Ghost Runner talk to Adam and Zoe because the Ghost Runner has the sexiest voice. Too bad that they hardly ever talk. Also, the story gave a reason for this abomination to exist. The story is only really there to give a reason for Robot Ninja to go around slicing gamers up. The game is $30. That's not worth it. For six hours of content and four hours of enjoyable content, is it worth the $30? I would put it in A tier if it was a ton of combat, and only combat. But not only is it only four hours, not a ton, but it's also got the non-combat stuff, B tier. And you know what? Tom here is bringing it down a whole tier. That's how much I hate it. And I know for a fact I'm just mad because I'm bad, but this is my tier list. So it's C tier. The game most certainly cannot stand beside Alien Isolation, and I actively have more fun playing Frostpunk than this. B tier is for the good games. A tier is for the great games. Y you know how it works. C tier is for the in the middle games. They're not bad, but they're not good either. And I don't think I could call Ghost Runner a good game per se. If you wanted to play something with high octane combat and good platforming too, uh, just just play Hyperlight Drifter, man. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to say. Hyperlight Drifter is better.